something that I always talk to my patients about is how do you prevent a heart attack or stroke? And there's factors that you can't change, such as your age, your gender, and some aspects of your genetics. But there are things that you can change. And LDL cholesterol is the single most modifiable risk factor. And so that's a big aspect of our risk that we can change. There's of course, lifestyle factors such as smoking, how we respond to stress, other things such as what we consume in our diet that could increase blood sugars. Blood pressure also can contribute to our elevated risk of heart attack and stroke. And then a big wild card that we're just starting to understand more is inflammation. And there are many diseases that come with inflammation such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, but inflammation can also occur in response to bad foods, such as processed foods and red meats. And so we need to be thinking about inflammation as there's so much data emerging that if we decrease inflammation, we decrease heart attack and stroke, but also a lot of other diseases such as cancer. One of the gold standard biomarkers that we use to assess cardiovascular risk is LDL cholesterol. But what we've seen is just looking at LDL cholesterol alone doesn't address all of the risk. We've seen in landmark studies such as Improve It, where the LDL cholesterol was driven to very low levels of 53, that there is still a 33% event rate. So L, looking at LDL isn't enough. And we have to look at other biomarkers such as triglycerides, lipoprotein A, and we also have to look at LDL in a more sophisticated way. And I'm gonna delve into that briefly. So LDL-C is the conventional way that we measure LDL cholesterol, but there are better ways to look at LDL that includes biomarkers such as LDL particle number APOB and a simple calculation con called non-HDL, which is a better assessment of atherogenic particles. And so when we're looking at increasing lifespan and longevity, we really need to be looking at LDL in the correct way. In patients who have diabetes and metabolic syndrome, they have high triglycerides and sometimes have a falsely low LDL, so we can underestimate risk in these patients and not treat them appropriately. Here's a nice, simple way of capturing what I just said, which is that and you can have two patients that have the same LDL cholesterol numbers, but they can have drastically different LDL particle numbers. And so this is a better way of looking at their atherosclerotic burden. And you see that one of the patients has an LDL particle number of 1806, while the other has a particle number of 923. And in th these two patients, the conventional measurement LDL cholesterol is really underestimating risk in one of the patients. The other biomarker that we really need to be thinking about is lipoprotein A. And the way I think about lipoprotein A is very much like LDL cholesterol, and it's, and it's, a, it's very atherogenic, but it's a more diabolical version of LDL cholesterol as it's more thrombotic and atherogenic. And lipoprotein A is more common than you think. It occurs in one in every five people. And people who have an elevated lipoprotein A are at higher risk of cardiovascular events. So this is the biomarker that I check at least once in everyone. And as I said earlier, it's more diabolical than LDL and it's because it is more pro-atherogenic and pro-thrombotic. 